across the presentation, I've, I've done a little bit of a wide span at times and, uh, and sort of zoomed in at other times. And I'd like to sort of, as I zoomed in at UBC, I, I wanted to zoom in at a, a university in China. And this is a, a, a real a case to give you a sort of a sense, uh, not just what this university in China would do, actually, I think it's sort of uh, typical of what universities all over the world strive for. Um, in conjunction with uh, conversations coming out of the uh, Chinese government, um, there's a sort of a call for um, uh, universities and departments within universities uh, to, to vie to become a world player in the knowledge economy. Uh, one of the departments that I know, know well there has sort of laid out its plans for the next, uh, uh, I think it's five years. And uh, right now, they perceive themselves as ranked 10th uh, uh, worldwide. And actually, I think it's probably a, a accurate in terms, of, um, in terms of their ranking, even though I, I find it difficult to distinguish sometimes um, a 10th from a 12th or a 15th or from a 5th. Uh, but they've set themselves a goal to be um, uh, within the top five um, in the future. Um, you can also sort of see that they recognize that uh, to be a global player that they, uh, um, they want to expand the number of foreign faculty. Already in this particular department, 25% of the faculty are foreign. And by that, they, they are predominantly from uh, the US, Canada, or the UK. Uh, and their goal in the future is for 50% of them to be uh, a foreign faculty. Uh, they want to increase their participation in editorial boards on uh, SSCI types of journals. Right now, um, a 17%, they've got about a 17% participation. Uh, that is 17% of their faculty participating in some a key international board. Uh, their goal is to get up to 30%. Uh, you also sort of see it in terms of the student bodies. Where, whereas China doesn't to be, seem to be so driven by needing international students to, uh, to avoid a deficit, uh, they recognize that they want an international student body. And so right now, they estimate that their uh, undergraduate uh, population in this particular department is 10%, and they want to get it up to 30%. By the way, China is, um, serves a huge population of students who might not be able to afford uh, educa higher education in Canada or the US or the UK or Australia. And so they are attracting uh, students because it is an affordable place to go. Uh, the cost of living within a, uh, a Chinese university is, 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 is very low compared with uh, uh, Western universities. But also, you can sort of see their grad population. Uh, this particular part and their grad population uh, is around 50%, and they want to get it up to 70%. And unlike the global trend in the West, which seems to be still into this sort of the empire, um, they've got right now about 32 courses they offer in English, and they want to get that up to uh, 47. Um, and then in terms of publications in international SSCI approved journals and conference presentations, um, right now, they, they, uh, last year, they had about uh, 40 international conference presentations by their faculty and about 19 publications uh, in uh, international journals. And their goal is in the future to get up that, to that of about 100 uh, a year with um, uh, 30 publications in international journals. Uh, this starts to give you a sort of a, a, a sense of the ambitions of, of universities and, and how they might be instantiated. I've just given you a partial list of their goals. Uh, what they're trying to do is to internationalize their programs. And um, already in China, uh, as a result of having their foreign teachers, they're engaging their students with uh, Western research, Western epistemology, and they're offering courses in, in, in more than one, one language. And so there's not this sort of, uh, what I think is almost a sort of a, a parochialism tied up with this uh, monolinguistic approach in, in most Western, or uh, at least Canadian and, and US institutions. 
where the, the view of treating international students to be re-socialized in a Western tradition seems to be quite prevalent, um, which, which, whereas in China you're sort of seeing this tradition um, of you know, wanting to engage um, the international students with Chinese epistemology, Chinese uh, scholarship, uh, but also to make sure that they're exposed to and engage with uh, Western scholarship, Western traditions, and, um, and so on. So hopefully I've given you a sort of a, a, a sense of some of the complexities of the, of the, the global dynamics, sort of talking about it as, as it's changed over time, but talking about it particularly in this sort of uh, age where universities are hard pressed economically, how, the, um, how this sort of plays out relative to uh, uh, using the international as a, a leverage to get um, more financial resources, at the same time as it, it's, it seems to some, sometimes get down to not so much using these benchmarks as such as rankings as, as, a, as a means of getting a perspective on yourself, but they become goals unto themselves. So um, I think that sort of fits with that sort of Campbell's law that unfortunately what, what happens when you've got some sort of high stakes measure, that, that measure becomes the goal rather than a vehicle by which one can sort of look at oneself. So what I'd like to do just in sort of closing in the next part of the lecture is to talk to you about, you know, what do I see uh, as the key issues coming out of, out of this and what do I suggest might be a steps forward um, in, in a way to sort of address some of the, uh, the tensions and what I think might be some of the flaws about which we've spoken.